So, so okay. So now that you're seeing that, and sorry, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to watch it over here. Okay. Now, notice the first thing you're seeing. Again, the higher energy steps on top in red. Notice that you're seeing how it's spreading out. And I'm also scaling the y-axis, that's why it's like expanding. I have to scale the y-axis because the wave function um, it loses some height and it broadens. And it broadens because some of the waves are, are faster than others. Remember, there's a whole bunch of K waves. And now what you already see happening is you can see that the one on top, you see it get all wiggly. There's a little bit of penetration. You can see a little bit of a bump gets through the barrier but not too much, and, and it doesn't last. And maybe you, you can't even see it, I can barely see it. Now on the bottom, with the lower barrier, the, the barrier that's slightly lower than the energy, you can see the wave get through. Now notice another cool thing, is that that blue wave, the, the one that escapes to the right, uh, that one is less wavy, right? It, it's, in fact, if I was to, it's hard to describe these with a the wavelength, but I would definitely describe the wave that got through the barrier as having a longer wavelength. And the very and the wave that doesn't get through the, the like the B wave, the reflection wave, has a lot of wiggles to it, and that means that it has higher kinetic energy. And uh, once again, you see the y-axis. I, I know it looks a little funky because I'm scaling it. The wave function widens as it moves to the right because I am less certain where the particle is as it moves to the right because some of the waves that compose the particle in the box have high k and some have low k. You may recall that when we talked about the particle in the box and how it's composed of a sum of, of momentum waves. Okay, so now you're seeing the blue one has hit and it's going through the thin barrier and it's going through very efficiently and the red one less so, which makes sense. The blue barrier is way thinner. In fact, you can see that it's about halfway through and clearly a lot more of the blue wave is going through than the red wave, which makes sense. But, you know, it'd be funny, I would think that the red wave would be like less less by a factor of 10, and it actually doesn't look that different. Okay, so what you're seeing on the bottom is the, um, why did I draw this twice, what's wrong with me? Anyway, you see the absolute value of the, of the ground state wave function on bottom, and on top is the first excited state. Now I'm gonna let the video go, and what's happening is, um, so now it's moving, what's happening is I am taking this wave function and I'm exposing it to a time-bearing electric field. The electric field is pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling. Now, right now, not much is happening. Um, it's just nothing much is happening. Now, you may notice that there's time. Time is on the upper left there, and that's in femtoseconds. Now, if we wait, it, 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 this goes on about two minutes, so we're starting to see it move a little bit. Now, what's happening, by the way, to simulate an electric field, you know, like from light, what I'm doing is, I just simply change the potential surface, it's like seesaws up and down. And that is what a bond feels from a time-varying electric field, such as that from light. Okay, you may notice that it's starting to jostle now quite a bit left and right, and it's even starting to build up a node. Now, the reason that it's responding, that it's moving around, is because the degree to which I have, you know, I have the, the potential surface rocking back and forth, at a certain frequency. That frequency times h, Planck's constant, happens to be the difference in energy between the ground and first excited state. So now we're near to the end of the simulation. We're at, sorry, I have to look over here. We're at 100 femtoseconds. And you may notice that the ground state wave function as the, as the time-varying electric field, which is a photon of energy equal to the difference between the ground state and the first excited state, you notice that the ground state is turning into the excited state. It's turning into the first excited state, and it's starting to look a lot like it, right? What I'm showing you is the act of absorption. This is why you have a peak in your FTIR spectrum, because the ground state is absorbing that energy and it's turning to the first excited state. Once it's fully transformed, and you can see that it's close, once it's fully transformed into the um, first excited state, the photon has disappeared, and, and it's now in that excited state, and, and you're done. Now that absorption of energy of the photon registers as an absorption in your FTIR spectrum. So, there you go. What you get out of this is, uh, don't worry so much about details about how I perform these simulations. They're, they're actually a lot easier than you might think. What you get out of this is some of the things that are almost never taught in a PCHEM uh, class 
but again, I couldn't resist because of all the media that we can now incorporate into the class. What I wanted to show you is that absorption of light is not instantaneous. Now, you may have followed in that uh, time now that it's done. You may notice that the, the, I was keeping track of time in the upper left there. It was about, that simulation was about 150 femtoseconds. It took 150 femtoseconds, 10 to the minus 15 femtoseconds, for this thing to absorb light. Absorption of light is not instantaneous. It takes a little bit of time. And in that time, the, varying, the time varying electric field in, take like, a, a, you know, let's take HCl. The H is positive, the Cl is minus, so the electric field causes it to start doing this. And if it's at the right frequency, well, you saw what happened. The ground state turns into the excited state, and then the photon disappears, and again, in the spectrometer, that registers as an absorption.